Hey everyone, I'm Andy Jenks with Henrico County Public Schools and welcome to the fourth video in a series of uh, videos meant to help families and students be successful on the first day of predominantly virtual learning, which is Tuesday, September 8th. We've reviewed several platforms, including how to create a PowerSchool account and what to do once you're in a PowerSchool account. And we've gotten to the point now where you as a family might be seeing an iPad or a Chromebook or a laptop or even all three in uh, your virtual learning environment at home. And Margaret Dalton is from our technology department. She's going to walk us through how to get started with each of those three devices. So first of all, Margaret, welcome in. We appreciate your time. And let's start with the iPad. The iPad is for students in grades pre-K and kindergarten. And for many families, you might be working with an iPad or any touchscreen tablet for the very first time. But when it comes to school, there are some unique properties. You can't just hit a button and they start. You have to log in, right? So let's start there. Logging into the iPad, what does that look like? So the iPad is going to be handed to the, the family with, in, in this case. It also will have a charging brick, which we call the charging brick, and the USB cable. So these three things a family must have. Um, on the case, I just do, I want to point out that it does have this little kickstand on the back of it. So it can be set up like this. And the student can, can have it on a table or in their lap or whatever with the little kickstand. The power button is here at the top. So that's going to be your top right corner. The volume buttons are over as well. They've moved them on me um, over here on the top right as well. So to unlock it for a student or a parent, they push the home button if it's already powered on. If it's not powered on, you push that home button and, the, and it'll, it'll come to life. So we press the home button. This is actually the lock page. And so you press the home button again. And now we are at our screen that has all of the apps. There are about eight or 10 pages of apps. So please explore as many as you would like. They're all there. They all have a purpose. Um, and that is how you get into the iPad. And we're going to get into some of those apps in some future Correct. videos in this series. But one thing to point out while we're on the iPad is that you don't actually log into the iPad. It's simply a matter of getting started and then you see the apps on the home screen of the device. Correct? Correct. All right. Now, it's a different story if we are talking about Chromebooks. And Chromebooks, many, many thousands of them have been distributed to students in grades one through five. And in some cases, especially, uh, it, certainly in my household where one of the kids is very young, using a, a device like this for the very first time, logging in is one of those things that doesn't really, at least it didn't occur to me until <laughs> we were home and the device was in front of us and it was like, what do we do next? Now, login credentials, we covered in a previous video. You can go to PowerSchool if you've created your PowerSchool account by now and look in the section for student information and your device login credentials are there. Margaret, once you have those credentials, you open up the Chromebook. Take us from, from that point forward. Sure. So uh, first through fifth graders are going to get the Chromebook, and it comes with a power cable and um, the, the brick. So they do come apart if you want to take them apart for easier storage. You're going to power it on, and the power button on a Chromebook is, is in the top right corner, very similar to an iPad. So you're going to put power it on, and then um, if, if you, at home, you're going to be presented with a slightly different screen. It's going to ask for you, first thing to, it's going to ask for you to do is it's going to ask to connect to the Wi-Fi. And that little blip that happened probably means that there's an update coming in from Google. So you're going to connect, the window you're going to see is connect connecting to your home Wi-Fi, pick your Wi-Fi network, put in the password, and then you should have a fan down here at the bottom that shows that you're connected and yep. it gives you what signal strength you have. And that's an important point on a Chromebook, which is nothing happens unless it's first connected to the internet. So we want to make sure that after you've logged in that you've connected to the, the network uh, that you're accessing, whether it's at home or somewhere else. Okay. Correct. After that, what happens next? So after that, you're going to put in your student's credentials that begin with HTTPS dash and then the, um, the username that can be found in PowerSchool. It should autofill with HenricoStudents.org. If it doesn't, that's okay. You just hit the at symbol and you type that in, but it should already be filled in. You hit next. And then you're going to get a couple other windows, and this is authenticating through or connecting, we'll say, to our um, Microsoft uh, environment or Microsoft Cloud. And here you're going to type it all out and uh, make sure you type it correctly. And then you're going to be prompted again for the password. Actually, the first time, 
And what we're doing here, Margaret, is this is student login information Correct. because this is what the student is going to be using to get to school. So uh, if we use some metaphors that we've uh, used earlier in, in our um, in our video series, this is what you use to get to school in the predominantly virtual environment. So we're logging in with student login credentials. So let's put parent login uh, information out of the picture for just a moment. Correct. And the last thing that you saw was you just say, yes, I want to stay signed into this Chromebook. And now what it's doing, it's, it's building the local profile. And it's all set. You say get started. And then it's going to take us to the desktop and it will open it will open three tabs for you every time you log in. Actually four, because we added one. We wanted to make sure that it had Office available if you needed it. And now you're here, and you're ready to go and, um, and start instruction for the day. All right, finally, Can we will move over to the, uh, the laptops, and that's for students in middle school and high school, a, a longstanding tradition in Henrico County Public Schools of providing one-to-one -one devices at those levels. So there may be some families out there who are already very familiar with the laptops. But for those who are new, uh, let's walk through logging into the laptop device and what folks will experience once they begin that process. Sure. So at home, you're also going to want to make sure that you are connected to the network. Um, and I'm already connected, so I have a nice fan here. But if you're not, it'll be a globe. And you can click on that globe and then select from your, find your home Wi-Fi and select from it. So here you're going to, again, you're just going to put in the credentials of the student. And on what's different is on a Windows device or a Windows laptop, you don't have to enter the whole, the whole thing. You can just enter the username and put in the password, and then it's going to log in. And so an important note about that, Margaret, is if you are logging on for the very first time, sometimes it actually takes a few minutes for the device to build your profile. So a helpful tip for students and families out there is don't log on just a couple minutes before your very first class on, on the very first day of school. You actually want to uh, log in several minutes, 10 minutes or longer prior to that class, just to make sure the device uh, has all the time that it needs to build the profile in your name and so that when school begins at a precise moment, you're already ready to go. So assuming you have logged in in plenty of time before class starts on that first day of school, what does it look like on the laptop now? So if, um, if you're a returning student and you and probably still have your laptop, this is what it's going to look like. If it'll, you'll have your own shortcuts and, and items on the desktop, for a brand new student that's coming to Henrico, it's going to look very different. It'll be a little bit cleaner, um, like because you haven't had a chance maybe to create any content. But this is what it looks like. Uh, Google Chrome will be shortcutted. You can also, for instance, you can right-click an icon and you can tell it that you want to pin it to the taskbar or make another shortcut someplace else. But it's it. This is. Your, your instructional device, your instructional laptop, and we encourage you to go explore what's on it and what you can do with it. All right, Margaret, thank you. And again, if you are simply looking for how to get your login credentials, we covered that in one of our videos about PowerSchool. You can create a PowerSchool account and look for that student information in PowerSchool that will help you log into your device. Uh, coming up, we are going to talk more about certain apps and platforms once you're into your device, such as Clever and Schoology and Microsoft Teams. Join us then.